Hey there folks, my name is Luke. Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review where today, oh yes, it is Everly stock time. This is the F4 Terminator pack. You guys have seen my videos on this before in the past. You guys have seen my overnight adventures with this pack. Now recently I was in my gear room, I was getting ready for a trip. I was considering taking out this pack and a question kind of popped into my head. How does this pack hold up to this day? I've had it in my possession for a long time. I've carried it for hundreds of miles, used it on countless trips, but after testing out so many good military backpacks, how does it hold up? I intend to answer that question in this follow-up review. Everybody, let's get to it. To start off here, let's go over some quick information. This will not be as detailed as my previous videos, so if you're interested in those, you can look those up. I will try to put a link in the description box down below for you. Around December of 2011, this pack became a military product. The NSN number is 8465016058. From what I understand and what I can find online, this pack was issued in a green color. While I've never seen one of these military issued packs, I have found quite a bit of information online in regards to the NSN number. This pack offers you 67 liters, which is roughly 4,100 cubic inches worth of space. There is a larger version of this pack out on the market if you are interested. This is available in Coyote Brown, Dry Earth, Military Green, and of course, the Multicam. This is a weapon compatible pack, which means that you can insert a scabbard into this and you can carry that with you and that does present some interesting functionality with this pack but also some issues which we'll talk about in just a minute when it comes to the materials you're looking at a combination of 1000 denier nylon and 500 denier nylon you're looking at ykk zippers and in general excellent quality with this pack because I've gone over this pack in such detail before I will not do that in this video I will point out the major characteristics of it and features but if you're looking for more information, as detailed as possible, you will find it in my other videos. You guys wanna to get to the point, and so do I. Here with the lid, this could be used as a fanny pack. It is attached to the top of the pack with PALS webbing and so on. You have two large pockets here on the front. These are attached to the pack. They cannot be removed. You have two large compression straps in the front of this pack. Now, if you take this pack and you set it down just like so, you could see here, boom perfect placement for a rifle. This is a shooting platform. You, you can lay your rifle right on the top and get your shot. You have webbing on the bottom so you can attach further gear. You also have a pocket, zippered pocket right here and another one in the back. That is for your scabbard. This here is for your rain cover. You have compression straps all over this pack. You have the two on the front. On the sides, you have these very large pockets. They can hold a lot of gear. You have stretchy hydration pockets down at the bottom. You also have more webbing so you can attach additional pouches. On each side of the pack, those pouches do unzip. So you can stow additional gear. You have webbing for additional pouches to be attached to. Now on the back side, you can see that you have a two-way zipper. This opens up, revealing the contents of the bag. But also, it opens up so you can run the scabbard outside of your pack. Taking a look at the back of the pack, you have your grab handle, the harness system, load lifters, adjustable sternum strap. The harness system can be raised and lowered depending upon your torso length. As you can see, there's quite a bit of padding here for the back, also for the lumbar support. You have the padded waist belt, fully adjustable. You can attach pouches to it. Essentially, this pack has every feature that a modern military tactical pack would have. Behind this pocket on the bottom, you do have a sleeping bag compartment. On the inside of the lid, you have some webbing and so on. Go ahead and pull back the lid for you. It's held on with two buckles. As you can see, this is an expandable pack. You have a draw pull. And on the inside of this pack, you have all sorts of sleeves and so on, so you can carry any type of gear that you want to. This is a hydration compatible backpack. It can also work with radios. You can have antennas, hoses, anything you want to streaming out of this bad boy. Again, folks, if you want more information, check out my other videos because there's just so much to this pack. And in fact, that is a con in my opinion. It's almost like Everly Stock didn't turn down a single idea when it came to the creation of this backpack. It's a good thing and also it's a bad thing. You know, it's good because it has all of those options, all of those features. It's a bad thing because it's just way too complicated for most people. Also, this pack is gigantic. At 67 liters, this pack is huge. 67 liters isn't all that much space really, but this pack is gigantic in my opinion. 
It's so big, so unruly. That is one of the biggest complaints when it comes to the Everly stock pack. You would think with a pack this large that it would be able to hold a ton of gear. And while it can hold quite a bit, it's not a ton. It's not a ton. When it comes to my personal adventures in the fall, especially going into the winter, I really begin to see how small this backpack is. 67 liters, it's not a ton of space, but you would think that this pack had more space to offer because of the gigantic size. Next up, this thing is extremely heavy, almost 10 pounds. You're going to feel it. You're gonna feel it before you add anything to it. And especially once you throw your load out on there, 10 pounds is very dramatic. 10 pounds makes a dramatic difference. Let's talk about comfort for a second. Yes, this pack is comfortable, but it's not the most comfortable pack out there. And that really is the point of this video. How well does this stack up against the competition that's out on the market today? Years ago when this pack hit the market, there weren't that many options. As time has progressed, there are many packs on the market, some better than this in my opinion. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on this pack. I just wanna be honest about it in my thoughts here. I still like this pack, I really do. There's a lot to like, but there's better packs out there for my personal needs. I think if you're a hunter, if you're somebody who is going out to do some shooting, this pack definitely presents you with some interesting options. It has the built-in weapons carrier. That's awesome, you can insert your scabbard and so on. That really is a great feature. Now, with that being said, you can throw quite a bit of weight inside of this pack and carry it comfortably. Generally, my loadouts range from roughly 30 pounds up to the very highest, 55, 60. With those weight ranges, this pack is comfortable, but there is an issue that does take away from the overall, I'm gonna say comfort of this pack in general. It's the way that this pack carries that weight. I have roughly 20 pounds in this pack right now, and yet you will be able to see what I'm talking about. As you can see here, the pack sways back and forth. It's even more dramatic when you have a lot of weight, a lot of gear inside of this backpack. It's one of those things where you have to be careful where you're carrying this because that weight shift, that sway can throw you off. If you're scrambling over some rocks, maybe there's some snow, you have to be careful. Because of the way that this pack was designed, it has that sway and there's not much you can do about it. Even with a scabbard in place, it will sway somewhat. So those are some cons with this pack, but at the same time, there's a lot to like here. It is feature rich. For those individuals who like tons of pockets, <laughs> this thing's got it. There are pockets and sleeves all over the place, all over the place. I'm not a huge fan of that. Over the years, my taste in backpacks really has changed. I used to like having all the pockets, the complication, but now I really do prefer things to be simple. I like having a large size ruck. I wanna throw in my kit bag so I can just grab them nice and easy. For me personally, this pack has too much going on, but as mentioned, you may like that, you may not, I don't know. Everybody's different. It's very, very well thought out. Again, so many features, so many pockets, sleeves. You can attach pouches and stuff all over the place on this backpack. The fanny pack is a great addition to this backpack, but it's one of those features, are you going to use it? That is the question, are you going to use it? This is one of those packs which you find on eBay all the time for sale for a cheap price. And that's because people go out, they see this thing, and they're like, wow, that pack is awesome. They get it, they realize it's so complicated, it's so heavy, there's so much going on, and there's all these features that they don't need. So it ends up on eBay for a cheap price. Speaking of which, the retail price for this pack is roughly 400 bucks. At the time of filming, you could find these for $200 used in excellent shape on eBay. That tells you something right there. This pack is used with the United States military. There's many soldiers who love it, but there are some common complaints, especially about the way that it handles the weight and the swaying. When it comes to the suspension system, it's comfortable enough Without a doubt, there are more comfortable packs out there. Packs that have much more padding than this. This is bare bones in my opinion, bare bones. The harness system is adjustable, but for shorter individuals than say myself, I wouldn't really recommend this. You can adjust the pack to fit you, but it begins to create so much distance from the top of the pack and the back here that the weight can throw you off. The distribution is not very good. So if you have a torso length of 19 and above, you can consider this pack. In the end, when it comes to comfort, I'd say it's not bad at all. 
it can get the job done, but there are packs out there that do this much better. I think that's the key. That's one thing that I really want to focus on for myself. Now, of course, you guys have to keep in mind that these are my thoughts, my opinions. You can disagree. You can love this pack. think it's the best thing of all time, and I won't disagree with you. For you, it may be, but with my opinion, yeah, the, in my opinion, after testing out so many military packs, this one falls behind. And I want to talk more about that and why that is. First off, this pack is not waterproof by any means. You do have these waterproof zippers and they function well enough. I've heard that the latest version of this pack has made some alterations to those waterproof zippers and they do not work very well. I cannot comment on that any further than that. It's simply what I've read. But with the older version, which this is, because I've had this for numerous years, the waterproof pockets, are they work well enough. With the pack being so large, there's so many nooks and crannies, you will need a pack cover. Thankfully, one is included. You will want to include a pack liner to keep your gear dry, in addition to the pack cover. You would think for a pack of this size that the sleeping bag compartment would be bigger. This will fit the average fourth season sleeping bag. You will not get the modular sleep system inside of this, inside of the sleeping bag compartment. There is a divider which you can take out. But if you do that, I mean, it's going to be taking up so much space in here that you're not going to have much room for anything else. This pack is limited on size. 67 liters, as mentioned before, is just not that much. And you would think that a pack of this size would offer you more than that, but it doesn't. Over the years, I've had plenty of issues with packing this backpack, and the thing is, there's just not enough room. Not if you pack your gear like I do. If you want to store things all over the place, you could do that. But I tend to forget where I've put things, you know? That's why I like my gear bags, my kit bags. So with that being said, if you're going to carry a larger sleep system, you will need to carry it on the outside of this backpack. For me personally, the size is the biggest issue with this pack. Next comes that swing. I don't really like that. When I put a backpack on, I really want it to fit like a turtle shell. I want it to become a part of my body. I don't want no swaying back and forth, and unfortunately, this pack has some sway. With all of this being said, you really have to ask yourself, what do you need? What are the most important features to a pack that you're looking for? Do you need it to be a weapons-compatible backpack? Do you need that location for the scabbard? That is one of the main aspects to this pack. And if you don't need that, if that's not a requirement, there are better backpacks, in my opinion, out on the market. Some people will claim that this is the best bug out pack of all time. It's not a bad option. It's not a bad option. I think there are better packs out there, personally. This one has just simply too much going on for it to be a really good bug out bag. Too many pockets, too much confusion that could come up unless you really want to train yourself. Okay, I have this and that pocket and so on. From a civilian standpoint, from someone who likes tactical and military gear, after testing out so many packs, there are packs that I like more than this. Now, I'm not going to get into which ones that I like better. Maybe, maybe I'll do that in a future episode if you guys want me to. I really do want to hear from you all. What do you guys think about the F4 Terminator pack? I've gone over my thoughts, my feelings on this. I'm sure that there are some people who simply do not like what I have to say about this because it, maybe they have this backpack. Maybe they own an Everly Stock product. Hopefully you can keep an open mind and hear what I'm talking about because the complaints that I've mentioned here with this pack are complaints that are widespread in the tactical military community. These are issues which are present with this backpack that people typically complain about. And of course, I've discovered these on my own over the years while testing this backpack out. I've been hard on this pack in this video, but the truth is, this is still a very good pack. And for some people, for some individuals, it's going to be a fantastic pack. It's going to be a great pack. For my needs specifically, it doesn't fit very well. There are better options out there. There's packs that are more comfortable, that are simpler, that have better features that match my personal tastes. That's how it goes, everybody. That's how it goes. Make sure to comment down below, share your thoughts. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you hate it, you know what to do. Thank you all so very much for your support. Patreon donators, thank you guys. Everybody, take care, strength and honor. I'll see you guys around.